That's music from Mecca Normal. The song is called War Between the Neighbors, and that's from their latest recording called Janice Zeppelin. An example there of one of their styles of music. They have many styles of music and improvised music there on the instruments with the poetry from Gene Smith. Now, when I got a chance to talk to Gene Smith and David Lester a little earlier this week, got to talk to them about this big tour of theirs, this BC tour, how art and music can change the world, and suggested that that was a... That was a fairly tall order. As cultural activists, we've always brought forth social issues into our work, whether it's in the song lyrics or talking from the stage or to individuals after a show who might have questions or ideas about what's going on in their community. So we've, we've always wanted to convey ideas and useful information. And a, a thread that's run through all of our sort of reaction that we get is that we're able to inspire people towards uh, creativity or ex expressing themselves uh, in political terms. So we, we take that to heart. And if, and if we are the sort of people who can inspire other people, then that's, that's another aspect of our activism. Pass the torch. Yeah, why not? You know, we've done all these things, and it almost seems like the cultural and political climate has returned to a point of or similar to when we started, that uh, the government is more oppressive, it feels like, and there's another bush in the White House. I'm referring back to when we started in the mid-'80s, when the whole underground movement, do-it-yourself, record releases, and lots of networking for tours, and that sort of thing was beginning. It was fertile ground, and now it feels like we're back to a beginning point, at the beginning of that cycle. So if we can take our experiences and put them forth and have other people utilize what we learned through all that, then so much the better. It does it feel kind of discouraging sometimes to think that in spite of 20 years of work on, from you, from other people who've been involved in activism, that we are back at the beginning of a cycle? It is, in a way, discouraging when I see ads on TV that are very exploitative of women's bodies and that that's all now just kind of taken for granted that we're back at a certain place where it seems like, did, did feminism ever happen? Did, did I dream all this sort of activism that was raising a level of consciousness with Riot Girl as a movement in the mid-90s where young women were taking over the stage with their bands and being very assertive about their their feelings and about their place in society and, and putting forth really strong messages. Now that all seems to be kind of washed away as if it was a fad or something. Now we're back to Britney type situation that's even more extreme than before. So yeah, it feels like if the pendulum has swung farther that perhaps the next round, if people can use what was learned previously, perhaps it will go farther the other way as, as we start again, to, to put a bit of a positive spin on it. Um, it makes it also all the more important to continue to, to do what we're doing and what other people have, have been doing in uh, creating their own work and putting it out there, even more so now that uh, people can download work for free. How does a musician ever sell anything or get by? So I think there's got to be new ways of creating an interaction with the audience, and that may take very different forms. Maybe live music will become, will have a resurgence as well. So that might, there might be good things come out of it all. What got you started in this vein, Jean? What got you interested in, in activism and then taking the road of, of musician, of artist, as a writer in terms of your, your activist uh, energy? I came from a household with two painters for parents, so I had a, a tendency towards self-expression. They were abstract painters in the 60s, so I came from that sort of environment. Uh, I was leading a fairly traditional life with a job and uh, going along in my early 20s when I met David Lester, my creative partner at uh, the West Ender newspaper where we both worked in the production department, and David been in bands and he had a political awareness that was completely new to me and he knew all about feminism. I felt like I learned so much at that time about what was going on in BC politically uh, and I, I just had a, 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 a real need to to express that in a very direct way. So in the beginning our songs were very literal. Are you hungry Joe? I walk alone. Uh, 
Fight for a Little, You Don't Get a Lot. These were the titles of some of the pieces on the first record where they were a very newly formed political activist in early 20s wanting to change the world, really. And uh, as a writer, I've evolved into more of a capability to allow my audience to interpret. And there's a more literary style that I don't feel responsible to always have, have to say the direct political message. But I think in that we've continued on as a band and done other things uh, that have a political significance, all of our political content doesn't have to be within the song lyric. So this is all you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so, yeah. It's because uh, uh, I, I grew up in a, in a in a household where I had an older brother who was a, quite an influence, and he was involved in the in the '60s underground uh, culture, and uh, so I had access to a lot of what was going on then to, as an eight-year-old, uh, uh, and uh, the whole civil rights movement. I, I was I found that incredible, and I followed the news and. So those were the kind of formative years of uh, <laughs> shaping my whole life, and and also the kind of music that I liked was often a lot of it was was a, was 60s protest music, folk music, and uh, yeah, as you get older, you just start to discover all these other people who are doing it in different in different forms, in a, in a way that uh, some of the songs were very explicit, like Gene was saying, and the others, uh, as we, as we've gone over the years, our, our form has has at times been um, explicitly challenging. What, what is musical, what is how you make a song. It's been quite a couple of decades, right? Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, we first, I mean, we started, we're coming up to our 20th anniversary in, the, in, the, in um, July, and that was the, the beginning of it all, where we played um, our first show was at the Smile and Buddha on East Hastings Street with, with DOA, and uh, we traveled around all over Europe and all over North America and, and played shows and found a receptive audience there. And, and we feel, we feel we're part of that whole underground culture thing, and we feel it's important to, to have that in a, in a society, because it does have its influence, and it's an important influence in, in the overall health, I think, of our societies. And also, it's been fun. You get to go and you play these shows, and we, we really enjoy playing and meeting people and uh, and presenting our work, which it, it varies from, from very kind of folk-like type of music at times to very more experimental music to, to rock, to punk. And we try to put this forward in a show, and uh, and that juxtaposition in itself is is for us exciting to be able to do that. And it leaves it wide open. We're not just sort of pigeonholed into one area. And so for us, that's, that, that makes it exciting to keep going. In, in our sort of underground community, it's not so much uh, people who are uh, entertainment consumers coming out to see something passively. They tend to be people who are graphic artists or filmmakers who we get a lot from them as well in our interaction. So it's reciprocal in a lot of ways as underground community tends to be. Uh, we, we tend to meet, of course, people who like what we do and have some experience or some something that they want to give us as, as far as what we mean to them and their lives. You know, because we're kind of a, a, can be construed to be aggressive and abrasive and opinionated and kind of fraught with this punk rock kind of energy. I, I'm sure there's a lot of people who dislike us equally as much, but we don't hear as much <laughs> from them as... They're not coming out so much. This is true, as is the way. And so there's debate on, on what we do in our, in our function as, as this, little, this little unit. So, so it's always interesting to know that it's out there. I was reading on your website that, that quote that you have there, it's from, I guess, one of the first interviews, one of the first appearances on the, the college radio, what the, the newspaper or the journal from that same university said, this is the worst recording ever and that you should be shot. Actually, it was from Edmonton, so we were number one at the radio station and the, the same station's publication said that I, the Dave should, not only should I be shot, but Dave should shoot me. So this is very early on. We just sent these records out that we'd put out ourselves, an LP, the big huge LP. We had a record pl pressing plant here in Vancouver, and we, we just did this, and, and people were, oh my, they, they haven't paid their dues. What are they doing? They shouldn't have put out a record, and there was this sort of uproar of we'd really cross some sort of line to put this out. So it, it got very, very mixed reviews.
like you say, sort of the, the very strong feelings on either side. Yeah, and they've persisted throughout, so we've had to learn how to deal with that. And, and I think in a way that that's inspired us. I think if people universally loved us and there was no one to say, you know, you really irritate me, we, we would maybe not have evolved to, it, into the, the longevity that we that we maintained. Our, we're determined to keep going, and that, that in part does fuel us. That kind of debate is, is, again, a healthy thing. It's an important thing. So if we can uh, cause that debate, then we're happy about that. I don't, I think, yeah, we've never been, uh, you know, we're, we're suspicious of that kind of complete uh, 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 acceptance of things because I just don't believe it as an idea. I don't think there is complete acceptance with, sh or there should be for, for, for anything. There should be, there should always be questioning and debate, and, and, and that's, part of what we do, whether we intended to or not, but it's certainly something that we feel comfortable with, is that kind of debate about about our music or our art. Have you been able to make a difference? Do you feel like you've been able to make a difference? Yes, and that's a great feeling to have personally. Uh, I've been cited, the band has been cited as, as an influence to the primary original members of the Riot Girl movement where they listened to Mecca Normal and came to a lot of our shows in Olympia where the whole thing started. Really experiencing something that they hadn't seen was a, a very powerful female force and I at that time spoke a lot about women's rights and different social issues concerning women from the stage as part of our performance and this information was looked at and and deemed to be worthy of taking forward in all these other avenues by a group of women who then called themselves riot girl which uh, this movement social movement in the mid 90s became almost mainstream to have time magazine and various tv panel discussions were talking about riot girl Part of the movement evolved into basically tens of thousands of young women networking and creating their own fanzines, expressing what they felt about life all over the world. Uh, and the importance of that is is uh, is unbelievable because it's outside of the mainstream again. They they were operating on their own level, cre con completely controlling what they were doing, and and in that way, it, it, they weren't leaving it up to to being defined by someone else. It was a, a fairly free form kind of movement without kind of without leaders or anything it just kind of took off in that way and that is when, when we talk about social change that that, uh, that certainly w changed those people's lives probably forever and the work that they did probably influenced the rest of their lives and the idea of uh, especially in the music business where where definitions of male and female and how you you should be this way or that way are so ingrained and defined and and so to have a network of people who suddenly there's w women who are doing sound or doing producing records or doing all the instruments and uh, and uh, and put and, and uh, that kind of thing it was 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 a revolution in a way so in that sense that was a, a very concrete way of feeling that we had a small you know influence in in making those those things happen it's been a great pleasure to speak to both of you and all the best with your travels in British Columbia thank you so much thank you Cheryl David Lester and Gene Smith, otherwise known as Mecca Normal, as they mentioned, celebrating 20 years of music and art and writing, 20 years in the underground. You can catch up with them with their art show and their workshop called How Art and Music Can Change the World. They're going to be in Nelson on Thursday, June the 17th at Charlotte's with the art exhibit. Then on Friday, June 18th in the Grand Forks Art Gallery. Great programming that's been going on there with Paul at the Art Gallery, so they'll be there Friday June 18th, then Saturday, June 19th in Caslow at the Crooked Cafe, and the suggestion I have on the note here is perhaps there'll be a spontaneous art show, art available for individual viewing, just ask, then Monday, June 21st in Vernon at the Vernon Art Gallery, so you can check out the website and find out more about where they're going to be, Mecca Normal, and the website is Mecca, M-E-C-C-A, so Mecca underscore normal dot tripod dot com. Mecca underscore normal dot tripod dot com. In the next half hour here on North by Northwest, as the crow flies. Right now, here's Brian Dance at 8.30 with the CBC Radio News.